Coming up this week on The Forum, I'll be talking with Independent Filmmaker Project Minnesota. That's coming up this week on The Forum. SPNN's Forum. I'm your host, Sani. Make sure you follow SPNN all over social media at SPNN and catch up with other episodes of SPNN's Forum at SPNN.org. Today I'll be talking with Independent Filmmaker Project Minnesota. I'll be talking with two people. The first person I get to talk to today is Executive Director Andrew Peterson. Welcome to SPNN's Forum. Oh, thanks. Thanks well, for I having me. Well, I guess I should say welcome to IFP. Yeah, we are welcome. Since we're not, <laughs> since we're not at the actual welcome. studio. Welcome. All right. <laughs> so thank you for allowing us into your space, which is pretty dope, I have to say so no myself. Um, just all the wood. I took wood shop, so I kind of got this textural thing yeah. going. I want to touch all the walls. <laughs> My, my family comes from construction, so they, they, they donated that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah. okay. How long has IFP been here? Next year, 2017, is our 30th anniversary. Okay. So, uh, in business or in this space? In business, we've been in this space a year. Okay. Uh, we were just up the street in the same neighborhood for about 10 years, and we just, uh, you know, we moved here to, to, uh, to improve, to raise our visibility, to get in front of more people and have this beautiful space. Okay. So what does IFP Minnesota do? Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a short answer. We do seven different programs, but oh, for the most part, the big, the big thing is that we're an artist service organization for anybody who wants to work in media arts. Okay. And that's not just somebody who wants to make a film and get into Sundance. That's a marketing person. We have, we have courses in iPhone photography and in, and in utilizing digital media, things that tell stories with images. Mm -hmm. um, we work, we have a pretty robust youth program uh, with after school programs, summer camps, and in school residencies. We do about 80 courses in the art business and technology of film in the evening for anybody. Most of them are introductory courses. And then we give grants, we do exhibitions and screenings, we have uh, ways to, uh, to support filmmakers in raising funds for their projects, um, and just uh, connecting creative people. Okay, I was gonna ask, um, with the rise of YouTube and Vimeo, is it Vimeo, did I say it right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, do you feel like, cause you've been in business, you said 30? I've been doing this all my life. Okay, but I mean IFP's been in business for 30, 30 years. Yeah. 30 years, so yeah. in, in that time, with the rise of uh, YouTube and Vimeo, do you think there is a different response to the use of IFP, since people are able to do that online by themselves? Are they taking more interest, is Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Every year it's taking off by leaps and bounds. I mean, if you look back 30 years, when you wanted to make an independent film, you were shooting on, 30, on 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter. You, were, you, needed to shoot, you needed to edit it on a steam back, which is, weighs about a ton and is about as big as you and me and these two chairs combined. Okay. You could not access that equipment on your own. You needed a space to go to in an mm -hmm. organization that had this. Mm -hmm. And in the early days, people used IFP primarily for that. They rented this, this, this stuff because it was one place to get it. If they couldn't afford to go to film school, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. What's different today is e you can make a movie on your iPhone. Right. You, everybody's got access to something that can shoot an image and something that can edit it for the most part but they still need to know the know the, know the tools how you know certain you know editing uh, styles and uh, directing and working with actors and these sorts of things so education is a big part of what we do mm -hmm. and we love catching people young uh, the first movie I ever made I was 15 and it's like you know and 3,000 years later I'm still, <laughs> I'm still making a movie do you still have it yeah, yeah I, oh my god if anybody see it nobody can see it I actually did see it we shot it oh, it's crazy that was that was that, that was so long ago. It was shot on video, mm -hmm. and when we edited it, you put two video, two VHS players next to each other with okay. this other one, and you'd, you'd you'd hit record and play at the same time. Mm. It was like making a mixtape on it. I was a, thinking a, like a, the old yeah, yeah. school tape recorders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's and and it looks it looks crazy. And I was the on-air host, so believe me, I have <laughs> great respect for what you do because I it's not easy. Uh, but I'm wearing some bad shirt and walking very stiffly. Hello, welcome to the. You know, it's horrible. So tell me more. Well, I guess I shouldn't ask you that because I'm going to be talking with Deacon about that more about the youth group. Yeah, part. yeah, he's great. Um, so can people just like walk in here? Like, is it because 
as I was talking to you earlier, when I hear the word film, I think, <laughs> I don't know if I'm out of my league or not. If someone says movie, I'm there. But if you, it seems yeah. really high society elite to me. I don't know if anyone else feels like that, but can people come in? Do you have like a welcoming entrance? Oh, of absolutely. I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, just sort of from what you can maybe see on camera and what you've seen from being here, just the way we've decorated the space, it's a space we want people to feel welcome in and they can hang out in. We have a big common area and a table outside. When I have a meeting and somebody has an idea and they just want to sit around and work, there's a place for them to just go out there and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little quiet right now, but we're doing our summer camps. There's 11 to 14 year olds running around here all the time. It is not an ivory tower. <laughs> this is a place where you can come and feel comfortable. Um, and, um, and just learn what you need to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I went to film school for graduate school and, I, and, and, and in many ways the same way that I said before, what, how members used IFP in the early days, because that's what, because I was shooting on film and I was mm -hmm. cutting on a steam back. And, and I kind of think, you know, if you're interested in film and thinking about film school, come and take a course here and see if it's something that grabs you. Mm -hmm. If you've got a story that you've always wanted to tell about your family or your community, you know, come here and get some tools about it and figure out how to do it. It, it, you know, you can do so much of this DIY, but we're here to help, mm -hmm. you know, with, so just, and we have a gallery that's open to the public. Yeah, so wander in. You don't right. need an appointment. Right. You can yeah. just come in, take a look around, scope us out, and then, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what projects has IFP helped with? I was doing a little digging and yeah. research, and you guys have actually helped with some really big projects. Don't yeah, lie. yeah. Most recently, the ones that have come out most recently, there, there was a film called um, Dear, uh, Dear White People mm -hmm. that was shot by uh, Justin Simeon. He's based in LA. Effie Brown, who's amazing, she produced uh, Project Greenlight on HBO. Mm -hmm. uh, she's shot in the state before and she's an old friend. That when they came here, they edited their film during production here at IFP. Okay. They were given, um, you know, it was, it was, they were a low budget film. It was going to cost far too much money for them to use a traditional editing space in town. They called us up and I said, $500 will give you a key. Mm -hmm. you know and here's the edit room and you can just use it throughout the course of production nice and that it, it's removing barriers and making and helping independent and independent filmmakers make their films it happen, yeah. and then most recently there was a film that premi that premiered at the South by Southwest Film Festival and played the Minneapolis St. Paul Film Festival called Astray mm -hmm. uh, and it was directed by Musa Saeed and he um, uh, it's, it's set in a, a Somali community here Beautiful, amazing film that's going to come out this next year. Everybody needs to see uh, about a stray dog, just a guy and a, and a stray dog throughout mm -hmm. the film. So if you like dogs, if you're interested, <laughs> see, there's lots of ways that's to connect with the film. <laughs> but um, you know, he needed some office space. Came here and used us. Uh, th there are documentaries uh, that that have been shot over the last bunch of years. We have what's called a fiscal sponsorship program, which is if you've got a movie you want to make and you're looking to raise money, uh, this allows you to collect donations for your for your project and get it. And uh, whoever donates that money gets a hundred percent tax write off. So when I go to my brother for a project and I say, can you give me some money for my film? He's like, I can give you 10 bucks. And I say, you get a 100% tax write-off. He's like, I'll give you 10,000. Right. <laughs> so that's, it, it's a tool that helps okay. people do that. Right. And we have about 50 projects through that. But what they do, it's not, we don't just give them this mechanism to raise money. We analyze their budgets with them. We talk to them about their production schedule. We talk about the, the distribution and festival, film festival strategy. We help them. It's not enough to just make a movie. You mm -hmm. want people to see your movie. Mm -hmm. So we try to tell them, talk to them about what the marketplace is, what audiences want to see, how they might want to think about maybe um, uh, shooting their film that, to maximize the chance that it's going to get in front of as many people as possible. So no matter where the filmmaker is in their project, you guys are able to offer resources to that filmmaker. Can I write that down? You did that so <laughs> much better than me. That's nice. Wherever you, I, I just slipped me to check after we're done. Um, but so, do you have any events coming up? I heard that you use the space for like different people can use the space. It's not just about filmmaking. So no. if people have events and yeah, a part of it too is that we wanted to be a place where creative people found each other. Mm -hmm. And when we, for instance, you, like our, we would do an annual fundraiser for us, mm -hmm. and we're a nonprofit, so we're poor. Okay. <laughs> so when we did a fundraiser, it was generally in the basement of a bar on a Tuesday night, and mm -hmm. it's like because that's all we could afford, mm -hmm. and that's sad mm -hmm. so we have this beautiful space now that we can do a fundraiser at and we're like but we want this to be available to everybody who needs a place like mm -hmm. that so for instance anybody who's in our fiscal sponsorship program part of that of that relationship is they can have an event here they can do a fundraiser they can do a screening they can do uh, whatever they want the what uh, the Walker Arts Center the Knight Foundation our City Council president did a fundraiser here um, the American Composers Forum has a national board of directors. They came here for a full day of breakout sessions to meet and sort of hang out because it's a creative space. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a space that you're inspired to talk about creative things. Mm -hmm. We're trying to connect people as well. So the second Thursday of every month, we do what's called a meetup. 
at uh, where it's just a, you know the brewery next door, Lake Monster Brewing. We just say from four to six on that day, everybody come over. We've got an entertainment attorney who is uh, who is with us every day, every meetup, and he gives free legal advice. So if somebody's got some entertainment law questions, yeah. he can. There's a place to, to get some some nice. some info. We do monthly screenings at the Bryant Lake Bowl, the third Wednesday of every month. Mm -hmm. It's Minnesota-made films with the filmmakers there mm -hmm. in conversation. We show the film and then have a conversation with the filmmaker about the making of the film, take Q&A from the audience. It sells out. It's a free event. Almost everything we do is free. Mm -hmm. That sells out every time. So it's like, you know, so people should just come and see that and see what's happening. And then afterwards, just stick around for a drink and meet the people who are doing yeah. the work. Who are making, who are being creative Find in Minnesota. Find your new collaborator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So for people who want to know about that, about everything you yeah. just said, where can we contact you? Because I have to talk to Deacon after this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, our website has all of the stuff on it. It's ifpmn.org. Okay. All right. Well, let me get over and talk to Deacon yeah. Warren, I believe, so we can talk about the youth programs. Thanks. But thank you for spending time yeah. with us today and allowing us in this creative space. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> <laughs>
on, on either a series of projects or one large project in, mm -hmm. in a week. So okay. that's always really fun. So, so when you say youth, what ages are you talking about? Um, our summer camps are like everywhere from like 10 years old up to 17 years old. What's, what's your biggest group that you serve the most, who seems like they're biting the most? Well, during the school year, we work a lot with high school age. Mm -hmm. um, but in the summer, the summer camps, they're, they're, it's more middle school age kids that are uh, really? coming in and doing animation, stuff like that. But it depends on the camp. Like our documentary camp this year did this really great experimental film with uh, Marie Ketring, a local filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, and that was an older group, you know, more high school age um, that were gravitated towards documentary filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Um, similarly, the music video camp's a little older, but then our introductory camps are really younger, which is fun. They come up with some wild... Drew, my goodness. All right, bring it back. Boom. Okay, so after speaking with Andrew, he said that a lot of the projects, or some of the projects that you guys work on, sometimes they go to Sundance, they go to these big film festivals, and they're very successful. Does that happen with the youth program? Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, we're, you know, just like any filmmaker, we start with dis distribution. And we, mm -hmm. when we work with the kids, like, okay, we're going to make a film. What are we making it for? Who do we want to see it? Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of dictates how we make the film and what we want it to look like to reach that audience. Um, so we, th we really work hard at getting the students' films out there. Mm -hmm. There's a couple film fests and screenings that happen each year. Um, the Walker Arts Center works together with, other, with SPNN and mm -hmm. other um, media arts organizations through TCYMN, the Twin Cities Youth Media Network. Mm -hmm. We do a, a collaborative screening at the Walker every February. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in May, there's a youth film festival, the EDU Film Fest, um, that we submit to every year and, and always have a number of films. It's a full day film fest at the Showplace Icon Theater in St. Louis Park. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really cool opportunity for the kids to see their films, you know, in a really state of the art, big screen theater, um, and then meet other filmmakers and there's panel discussions. So that's a really fun opportunity. Um, and then beyond that, you know, we, we submit, we get stuff broadcast locally on, on the cable access stations. Um, and we send stuff off to, to national competitions as well. We've had students get screened and um, winning awards in NIFTY, the National Film Festival for Talented Youth that's out in Seattle every spring. Um, we've had student work in the Chicago International Film Festival. Um, and we've had some stuff in the, in the locally in the Minneapolis-St. Paul International F Film Festival. So some really high quality work that, that our kids are doing. What happens to them when they get all of this national recognition? Like, do they just, are, the, some, are some kids like, nope, I'm good, I just want to <laughs> make stuff here in Minnesota. Yeah, like, I mean, the... some of them find that pretty cool and they go on to other things. Um, but then there's, there's those that, uh, that really is an important event for them to just take it seriously. And we, now we're at this point where I've been working here eight years and I'm starting to have the kids that were in the youth program come back and work with us in a professional capacity, the people that have, uh, you know, really decided to do this uh, as a career and it's really exciting to see them come back and get have them share their stories with the kids that are working here now and just let them see you know this is really something you can do yeah 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 that's cool so with same thing i asked andrew so with the rise of youtube and social media and you know it seems like everything's going to video um with the kids who come in during the summer are there a lot of bad habits filmmaker wise um that you have to like Un, that the kids have to unlearn when they come in here and because I know you offer different classes but um, every, a lot of people are doing it by themselves just we have the technology sure. now that yeah. we can do it ourselves do you find that there's a lot of habits where you're like eh, we don't do that yeah you know I mean the biggest thing is is just to uh, make sure that people are paying attention to story you know that okay. there, there's a tendency especially with younger filmmakers that they're they get into the technology right away you know and mm -hmm. they get their hands on a GoPro and they want to you know just do all these different shots and which is cool and you mm -hmm. need to experiment and play with cameras but at some point, you need to realize that what really makes it something people want to watch is the story. Is the story. Yeah, and really to get them to kind of, um, chases are great, and it's fun to shoot chases, <laughs> but they need to be involved in a story. Right, <laughs> it goes right, from one the chase, you just another. don't want to walk into a pointless chase. Yeah, right, right. right. Um, that said, uh, I think it's really important to let the students go in the direction they want to go, mm -hmm. um, challenge them to do some new things, different things, incorporate story, mm -hmm. um, maybe sometimes go for that deeper something in their films that mm -hmm. often the, the best films are ones that come from kids' real personal place and something that they have to make, you know, and that's just an honor to be a part of those projects that, you know, are really personal for students. And that's a lot of the work, frankly, in, in, in the school year, the kids that are really doing this over and over, they they get to some really meaningful stuff, um, which is pretty exciting to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any events other than um, classes for the teens? Like, do you have like an end of the camp event? Sure, yeah. I mean, we have screenings at, um, at the end of each week during the summer camps. We have invite fam friends and family to come in for those events. Mm -hmm. um, we also have kind of through the year, um, our after school program meets Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays through the school year. But then during the summertime to kind of get those youth back in here, 
We offer a Club Cine, our Cine Club. I think it's called Cine Club <laughs> now. It used to be Club Media. Okay. Name got changed. Too close to Club Med. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that one. <laughs> um, Cine Club, I think, is the new name for it. But that's every other Friday um, through the summer. So the it's the event that you have. It's, it's the, our, our after school students coming back in the summer to get together for kind of an open lab time on okay. Fridays. Okay, uh, and that's, that's every other Friday. Mm -hmm. right. we, okay. we, another event that we have in the summers, um, there's a 24 hour film challenge that we did this summer. We're going to do it again next summer. We're okay. again bringing youth together, mix them up in teams, and give them kind of a like the 48 hour film festival, but even a little more compressed. They come in on Friday um, and then finish up editing on Saturday. And so you make a whole film. Make a whole How film. How long is the film? You know, three to five minutes, something okay. like that. Which, uh, to do that in a day is you know, one of the things you learn when you, you create films is that it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. A three minute film, well done, that can take a lot of work. Really? So. What's the average time for a good three to five minute film? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it I depends know. on who's working and yeah, who's it editing could be and years. stuff. It depends what you're doing. But oh, with our goodness. youth, they tend to be on a little faster track than mm -hmm. maybe some uh, independent professional things. And, you know, they'll, every, uh, two or three weeks, we create stuff. Okay. You can do it in a day if you need to. If you, if you can, if you're willing to put in the work and sure. editing and finding actors and stuff. Do, do they involve actors in there? They, yeah, absolutely. They, uh, w everything, sometimes we cast people and bring them in. Oftentimes they cast themselves and okay. friends that are in, Quicker. whoever's around. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some wigs around, so, you know, okay. that helps. You said you have wigs around? <laughs> sure. I've got a prop box. There's right, that's a rubber nice. chicken that shows up in a lot of things. Oh, it's for the kids, huh? <laughs> yeah. I would think rubber chicken's kind of old school. They wouldn't like it. They still dig the rubber chicken? You know, if it's there, <laughs> you make use of what's around. I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so, um, if for parents and for students alike who want to be a part of your different summer programs, where can they contact you? Um, our website is a great place to look at all the different opportunities through our youth program. Um, ifpmn.org. Uh, there's you can check out our learn more about the after school program. You can apply online for that. Look at a documentary of that was made from last year's group. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at our listings for summer camps um, and other opportunities we've got for youth. And any of the classes that we offer for adults uh, in the weekends and evenings are open to people of any age. And okay. a lot of times, you know, the high school kids come into those classes and they actually bring a lot more experience with some of the software than, than the adults. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, What's their technology? <laughs> right, yeah, um, they're savvy. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so where can we, uh, other than ifpmn.org, right? So where can we, how can we follow you on social media? Um, Facebook, you can find IFP Minnesota on Facebook. You can join the Juice Media group if you want to check that out. Okay. Um, we also have a Vimeo channel that you can access through our webpage that has mm -hmm. hundreds of films. Uh, you can see lots and lots of both films made by our youth and made by our okay. members okay. as well. Just, just last minute. Are any of the staff still making films, or? Uh, yeah, I think just about everybody is involved in some kind of filmmaking or other. So you guys are actually having real life experience and giving it to them. Okay. That's yeah, awesome. I, do, I make. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm working on a film right now on the food co-ops in the Twin Cities, the, oh. the conflicts that happened in the '70s and their relevance today. Radicalrootsfilm.com. You can check okay. that out. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Deacon. Yeah. I appreciate you guys letting nice us come out to the space. All right then. Thanks for being here. I'm Sonny. You've been watching SPN Inform.